Hi, today we're going to look at Metcal's high thermal demand handpiece and the high thermal demand cartridges that you can use with it. Now these have been designed for high thermal demand applications, so for example when you're soldering onto aluminium PCBs or when you've got extremely large components or you might be soldering onto wires, that kind of thing where you need to be able to dump more heat into the joint quicker. Now you can get these hand pieces for both the MX5200 system coming in at about $147 or you can get it for the connection validation system, a little bit more expensive because it had that LED coloured ring uh, and a slightly different cable. Now if we compare the standard connection validation handpiece with the high thermal demand handpiece you can see that they're essentially identical. I can't see any difference in terms of dimensions or anything like that, the only difference is obviously the high thermal demand one is coloured red. Uh, there's no difference at this end, the cables appear to be exactly the same, also the connectors are the same. I did wonder whether they'd use a slightly thicker coax or something like that, but no, those two are absolutely identical. So I think it comes down to possibly what's inside these hand pieces. Now if we look at the US patent for a typical Metcal hand piece, you can see here we've got the coaxial cable coming in. It goes through a series element that's labelled number 80, which it describes in this particular patent as a series capacitor. And then that connects to the coaxial connector where the cartridge actually plugs in. And I think this series element basically does a bit of matching to the heating element. And the new cartridges that you can get for this handpiece have much larger heating elements. So I suspect this component here has been optimised to deliver the maximum power into that heating element. So quite a different story for the cartridges. These have an obvious visible difference. So we've got the high thermal demand cartridge here, which has a much larger area at the end of the tip. At this end, they're all identical. Uh, so are interchangeable in the high thermal demand handpiece. But at this end, we've got a much larger heating element and also more thermal mass so that we're able to dump heat straight away into the joint. But these two are the same style, just this is the high thermal demand. So exactly the same geometry, same temperature. Similarly, these are two 2.5mm cartridges, but this is the high thermal demand and obviously looks like it'll be able to deliver more power into the joint. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you may have seen my aquarium-like project where I designed this aluminium PCB. It's 2mm thick and on its own, it's quite a significant heat sink and also heat spreader. And when I was trying to solder the wires onto these connection points, what I did notice is it took a bit of time for the solder to melt. Once the PCB was sort of getting warm then it was a little bit easier to solder but it did take a little bit longer than you would like. So what I'm hoping is that we can see a more instant melting of the solder with these high thermal demand cartridges. And now might be a good time to mention that a JLC PCB you can now get aluminium PCBs made starting from $2 for 5 PCBs up to 100 by 100 millimeters. so a really good price. If you want them bigger you can get them made but you do need to pay a bit more money. And also, more recently, they have added purple PCBs to their list of colours for standard FR4 boards if you're looking for something that stands out a bit more from the usual colours. So the PCB is at about 28 degrees C and we'll try soldering a wire on here just with the Pace ADS200 which is the station so far that I've actually been least impressed with. So let's try that first and see how that performs. So we'll put some solder onto this pad and then we'll try and heat up the pad once again to actually solder the wire onto it. So I think what we'll see is that we're able to melt solder and then as soon as we get that thermal bridge to the PCB, yeah, the solder itself becomes very difficult. It keeps sticking because the temperature has suddenly dropped. However, you can see we are able to melt the solder onto that pad. It's just it's gone very sticky. So there we go, I think we've got enough solder there, so let's try and solder this wire into there. And basically the problem that we're going to have is the longer that we take on this joint, for example, the more that the PVC is going to melt on this wire. And you can see we're not quite wet in the joint properly because the solder was dragging off there, but that looks about the best we can do with the ADS200 set to 380 degrees C. So I've cooled the PCB back down about 28.2 degrees C as you can see there, and let's try with the standard Metcal cartridge. So 
So as you can see, the solder isn't getting stuck on this one. And then we'll try and solder that wire in. Not really too much of a problem there. Probably could have done with a little bit more solder. But yeah, that solder is absolutely no problem. So we're pretty much back down to temperature. So let's try it with the high thermal demand handpiece and cartridge instead. Wow, that's very, very quick. Absolutely no problems there. That's very similar to soldering onto a plain FR4 board. Look how quickly that melts. So I've got a piece of three millimeter thick copper, as you can see here. And what we're gonna do now is see if we can actually solder a D2 pack package directly onto here. Let's say if you had an application where you needed direct heat sinking on some transistors or something like that. Okay, let's see what happens. So we're delivering maximum power here. The power meter on the front of the unit is reading 80 watts right at the very top. It's not yet flowed onto the copper, as you can see. Let's see if we can actually see what's happening here. So it looks like the D2 pack is only at 115 degrees C at the moment. It looks like it's just about to start taking to the copper here. And there we go, you can see it's just starting to flow now. So this copper is pretty hot. We can probably melt some of the solder in the nearby area. Yeah, you can see. There we go. So we have managed to solder onto a solid piece of copper here. And as you can see, even over here, the temperature of the copper is 115 degrees C. So this is a significant amount of heat sinking and we were able to solder that package onto there. So just for fun, we'll try with the ADS 200 set to maximum temperature. So as you can see, it's about 440 degrees C, it looks like it's gonna to get to. So we'll try and heat this one up and do exactly the same thing once again. So the readout on the front of the ADS-200 has dropped to 370 degrees C at the moment. And let's see what happens. So you can see the, the soldier's actually gone solid on one side there. Just trying to get a good thermal contact, but everything's just solidifying. So I think I'm going to give up on this one. It's been quite a long time and I'm getting nowhere here. 
We're going to continue with the big JBC tip and see how that gets on. This is actually a 7.5mm tip, I think it is. And you can see that's already doing significantly better than the pace was. And something's starting to happen. So it's just melted that blob that was just solidifying before with the pace system. The readout on the front of the JBC is maximum power into this tip, so it's putting, you know, about 120 watts probably into this. And you can see already something's starting to happen here now. Yeah, that's all starting to melt. So JBC, absolutely no problem with it. The pace was really struggling. And obviously we saw the Metcal as well doing a really good job soldering onto this piece of copper. Bear in mind the JBC was starting with quite a warm uh, piece of copper to start with from the ADS-200. But now we're just able to melt that absolutely no problems with the JBC system. So hopefully that answers a few questions about the high thermal capacity handpiece and the HCV cartridges. Essentially what it boils down to is if you have a existing MX5200 or CV5200 and the standard handpiece and standard cartridges just aren't quite meeting the mark or in the case of the CV system uh, you're just unable to register a good solder joint. This is sort of an upgrade path to allow you to extract all of the performance from the main station uh, without having to move to something else. And indeed, this is the first time I've ever seen that power meter reading 80 watts continuously. So, you know, this really does work. We were able to dump all of that power into that piece of copper. So hopefully you found the video useful. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters and also to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.